and I'd love to welcome uh, the director of Rachel Denver. Producer Alex Sachs sent me the script in November 2020, and I was living with my parents, taking care of them in lockdowns before vaccines arrived. And I read this script, and it felt like it spoke to so much of the things that I was trafficking in at the time in terms of dealing with how I spend time, you know, what fills my day, um, and my relationship to that positive, negative, you know. Um, and I told her that I wanted to do it. And then our first conversation about putting the film together was who's going to be Fran? And that person was Daisy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Daisy, how did you feel when you first read the script? I uh, loved it. And I will say that every time I read the script, I did cry when I read the line, Do you wish you could unknown me? Because I was like, that for me is one of the saddest things a person could ever ask another person. Like, would your life be better if my existence was, you know. Um, I, I loved Fran, and I also loved the world. I loved all the characters, and I feel like this is the whole that's greater than the sum of the parts. So I was excited to be part of the world, and I really wanted to work with Rachel. And then it all worked well together, and we made it that same year. Well, and it was your first time producing. How was that experience? Uh, initially, I just came in as an actor, but it was early days. Very. So, yeah. So then we all held hands and said, okay, this is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to facilitate the film. Um, but Rachel made it very easy. There were some creative decisions that I said yes to. Um, <laughs> it was all just wonderful. Like everything <laughs> was easy to jump on board with. And then honestly, from the moment I touched down in Portland, I was just like treated like an actor, which was amazing. Because I just got to play and like be with my team, my office team. And uh, I didn't have to think about anything else. Well, Dave, it's kind of crazy that this is your first role in a film, Woo. considering. Woo. 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 Of our day. <laughs> well, how was it reading the script for you and the experience getting to do this? I mean, I always like when I read it, anything I could visualize. It, it was something about the dead ending um, that just made it all complete. Also, I saw certain stuff in France that I would, you know, I think, I think everyone, you know, you feel like you want to belong and, and then you want your own time. It's just that, you know, going back and forth, but then obviously working with Daisy. And um, I zoomed with Rachel, and yeah, I just felt comfortable. I felt she would take care of me. <laughs> Not like a mom. In like all ways. <laughs> well, I mean, it's such a strong cast. How did you guys go about kind of creating the lots, like especially in the role of like the office? You know, obviously there's like sort of shorthand familiarity there. How did I do that? I mean, well, I mean. <laughs> Well, okay, I guess I can, I, what I will claim any responsibility for is like, I don't want to, they built their ensemble, you know, like that's their work, that's their instincts, that's their willingness to play and, and give. Um, what I felt responsible for uh, was creating a few things that would, would enable that. And one of that, one of the main things was the set and creating a 360 set where like the computers were, they had, uh, various spreadsheets and they had workable emails and they had all kinds of assets that they could play with at their computers and messenger systems and every desk was sort of curated and designed mm -hmm. towards a character and then each person was asked to bring pieces in, at least five pieces, um, or in Daisy's case, knowing Fran wouldn't have anything, which is in and of itself <laughs> such a great choice. 
So there was this sense that when they came to the office and there'd be times where, okay, maybe we're getting coverage of something at, at Fran's desk, but people would be invited to work all day at their desks or there'd be certain times where I'd make sure that people were just there in the room working. You could wander off to make something at the Keurig if you wanted it worked. Everything worked. It was all 360. It was all like a real place. Mm -hmm. And that way it felt like everyone was coming to an office every day and, and everyone could just sort of go in their own little playland world. You know, I always think of building a set, facilitating performance is so much about like playtime when we were kids, like making the most believable playground possible so then those that show up can allow their imagination to fully inhabit the space and then it makes it such less work to go from instinct to choice instinct to play instinct to then put those things into the room and if you can shorten that distance for a performer it's just sort of allowing them to have more tools more paints at the canvas immediately available to them and then my job after that is to then just get the out of the way <laughs> and let them play and then capture and try to capture it and facilitate from there um, as the best first audience that I get to be. Yeah. Well, I agree with the sense that the script felt was like very open in the ways that you were allowed to play, you know, and you obviously have such a great ensemble, especially with a lot of like really amazing comedians. Um, how was it kind of like being able to improv and uh, play off of each other like that? It was so great. It was so easy. I love working with comedians um, and certainly with this film, because I knew I was going to be doing so much improv, so much um, finding things on the day, in addition to what was so scripted, um, because the script gave us this perfect skeleton to work with, and then I knew we needed to fill it in with the visions, with the office life, all that muscular tissue organs, all the stuff to make the, the, the thing come alive. And I wanted to surround Daisy with the, the most intuitive um, collection of actors that had a, a real sensibility and acumen for, for comedy. Um, but it was, it was wonderful. It felt like there was a wonderful collaboration uh, from day one and it really set off by giving people space to make choices and be, to celebrate them, to be a fan of it, to, um, like I said, be that first audience and then I got to play and come up with ideas, which was fun. And, um, but that also extended to our visions, you know? So we had the, the comedy part of it, but there was something very improvisational about finding these hyper-composed moments inside Fran's mind. There was a similar level of finding, discovering, and relying, trusting one another. Um, it, it extended throughout the tonal spaces in the film. Yeah, Daisy and Dave, what, how did that feel to be able to have so much, like, kind of like, Freedom to be able to kind of play around with these characters. I mean, strangely, the thing that's coming to mind is I often found it so hard to not laugh. I, like, <laughs> I mean, because obviously, like, Fran enjoys her life, but yeah. she's not so involved. When Meg came over and decided to go booga booga, I was like, what's happening? And then I thought on my coverage she wouldn't do it, and she kept doing it. I was like, good God. Um, so if anything, it was like the first day we were all around the, the table, the um, introduction thing, and Meg honestly went on a five to ten minute monologue. Mm -hmm. We were all laughing so much. Like, there was no way any of it could be used because everyone was laughing so much. But it was so joyful. Yes. And it, but then it was like everyone started to get real long yeah, in their yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. And then you just kind of be like, oh, yeah. um, yeah. you just want to be gentle about it. You're just like, I think let's let's get back to that thing here. Yeah. Let's start there. And you know, if you cut back to that point, it'll disrupt the flow enough to get back to the thing. But yeah. but that five, ten, ten minute tear, I mean, I think I said once before, it's glue. Yeah. And you just can feel it when it's building glue. And you're like, this five to 10 minutes is gonna buy me a week of filming. Yeah. <laughs> so, but go. It, it was also fun because I said to Dave, I was like, it's gonna be so hard for you to make a laugh. So like walking up the hill, I was like, you better try and make me laugh. Yeah, and all of that was unscripted. <laughs> all of that was Dave, but I was trying so hard to not. Yeah, it was like, I, I do like standing on comedy and it's hard, but this was hard because Rachel was like, you just make her laugh in like seven seconds. It felt, it felt like 30, and I don't know if any of you have tried to make someone laugh across the street. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, I've walked a lot. But there was this one part, it's not even on camera, but it was the, the, the actor, Jeff, who plays the guy that was talking about the clothes. 
I, um, it was like during, we were filming and I went to go into this room and I opened the door and I see feet. And I'm like, I thought this person died. Uh, and I open the door and it's Jeff, he's like on his back. And I go, Jeff, uh, uh, everything all right? He goes, yeah, buddy, just taking a nap, but he ain't looking at me. I close the door and I go, oh, this guy's nuts. Uh, it's good for the movie. Yeah, that whole vibe. That whole vibe. Well, I love that that scene was like largely improvised because that feels like it's a big kind of bonding between creating a relationship between the two of you. How was that? I mean, I think at that point I had felt more comfortable, so I think I, I wasn't as scared to try to, to make a laugh across the street. <laughs> yeah, it just, yeah. It was like, like, it wasn't hard work. And then as things went on, I think everyone, um, and I, I think it's fair to say you were nervous. And I also felt like a detective of day because I was like, it's really scary going to a new job, firstly, and in a medium that you have not done before. And he's never had a job before. He's never, never had, had a job. job. So like, you yeah. had these big boy <laughs> he, took, he took care of me. That. That's the thing too I really appreciate is the guidance and I was so scared and nervous, probably more than I let on for sure. Um, I mean, when I was alone, I was like, I think I'm not doing well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that. Yeah. Also, when I saw you in the gym, and I was like, are you okay? And you were like, I think you went to the doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you didn't feel right. I was like, I think you're nervous. I think you're fine. Yeah, and I probably, yeah, I shouldn't have told you. Oh. <laughs> 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 and I probably, <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't have told you. Yeah, I shouldn't have told you. Yeah, I shouldn't have told you. Because when it came out, I went, oh god, and I couldn't catch it. I didn't want to try to catch what I said, and I was like, I don't even know her that well. She's gonna become a weird, I'm already a weird girl too, and I'm a weird, and it's on a gym mat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's clear, I think, um, that you guys really, like, created a bond together, and I think that obviously comes out in the pivotal scene at the end of the film, when you're in the car, and you're like, no wonder you can't stay married, which is just, ooh, so like, whoa. I mean, I don't have words to actually describe it clearly. Um, you know, how is it shooting that scene? Because it's just so, like, it's just so rough to watch, and I can't even imagine, like, doing it. That was the most difficult scene for me, for sure. Yeah. Um, I found, like, Fran is very different to, my, uh, to me, but I found her to be very, uh, like, I just felt like I knew her. Like, I felt yeah. it wasn't a leap to be her because I, she just felt so familiar to me. Um, and that, obviously, like, that is a transgression. And once she says it, like, she can't take that back. Um, and I felt like the moment had to be really earned. And I lent on Rachel a lot. Like, it was actually the last scene we filmed and I was, like, really concerned that I couldn't get it. Um, and I leaned on Dave a lot, and I was like, you're gonna have to give me like a lot for me to, re because it, it because it is a big reaction, like it has to uh, come from, uh, you know. And it's tricky because the, the end of the boat is so lovely, like the dinner's nice and everything's good, and then it's just like that one comment of where did you grow up, and suddenly everything gets a bit uncomfortable again, and it's like, oh, this is like too intimate, this is too difficult. So I came in with that feeling of like, um, but yeah, I had to lean on. You know what's really interesting so. is cutting from, because there's all these little bits of business that you did gesturally, or sometimes even like a bit of like a line or something that you would do at that point when the attention was coming to Fran and her backstory at the dinner table. And cutting from that to where you began in the car, the scene was, hmm, I think that's impressive. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that. <laughs> so Dana, how was it for you? I mean, I've exhausted a lot of women in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, my 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 God
uh, in LA where I live in my apartment. I used to have any scenes. It was better. Yes, yeah, thank God. Yeah. He's a good scene partner, I guess, but it was weird. He's not an actor? No. <laughs> That's the most scandalous part of the whole story. <laughs> I just made them in the Oh my god. <laughs> I just realized I was about a friend of mine, that's all. It's <laughs> great. A lot of revelations today. A lot. Well, okay, so I'm just going to ask this question. I love the scene right after because I think it really encapsulates Fran's like kind of emotional state after obviously saying something like that. And I think we. I mean, most people can relate to saying something that they didn't mean, or, you know, you know, there's like kind of a panic attack kind of vibe, it's a very claustrophobic feeling. You know, how was shooting that scene, and why did you choose to kind of like make it feel so like claustrophobic in that way? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of it was coming out of, I mean, there's what the story is telling you to do. But, um, and there's things that I can have a conversation about with Dustin about how we want to capture something. But, you know, that day was so interesting because, so he and I like to get to set, uh, I don't know, like a couple hours before anybody else shows up. And, you know, sometimes it can be really heavily setting up what we want to cover or even just anticipating the day. But that day was really interesting because um, and he put on some music and we like lit some incense, something he likes to do, I don't know, I can't tell you. And doing that, and we're just like laying, we decided to lay on the floor um, in anticipation of, of Daisy's day. Let's lay on the floor. And we're laying there and he's sort of like, okay, but like how do we, what are we, like how, how do we capture all this stuff that we've talked about? And I was like, well, and this is also how we dealt with the visions was like so much of it had to be built out of Daisy and where she was and what she was thinking and feeling. And it was like, we were in a dance with her and even more so here than any other time. And it was one of the few times where he and I didn't make any plan for how we were gonna shoot it at all. We just, it was totally free form. And it made it, the, I remember the, the day when which we were doing all those sort of photographs of, of Fran in these frames that piece out her body and you see a kind of we talked about crustaceans we talked about what's going on inside of her body literally she's not eating she's not drinking water there's these kinds of elements just like breaking down the human animal to to that level and we had that intellectualized and you know i felt like we were it was such an it felt intimate for me because here's daisy We'd had conversations, we'd also intellectualized and emotionalized it, and here she was in this, you know, we would call out things, she would have ideas, she would come up with images, and it was just this wonderful exchange, and it felt, the crew was wonderful that day, very, very quiet, very respectful, and it felt like we were just building images together, mm -hmm. um, me, Daisy, and Dustin, just really building what, how can we make something that lives inside composed photographs, something that's very vivid and, and, and emotional within. And I have a lot of fond memories of that time because it, it did feel, it felt like a little moment where you, me and him were just together. Mm. Mm. That's really beautiful. I think, I mean, having brought up death, consider Yeah, it it's in the title. It's in the title. <laughs> um, but I love the scenes, you know, I mean, Again, I'm like, I'm like, who hasn't been interested at all? You know? yeah. Yeah. And I think that this movie is really great in the ways that it, like, it really feels like how it feels to have that happen, you know? Um, and how was it kind of like shooting those scenes, especially I think the scenes where she was like thinking about dying, they're beautiful, you know? Um, uh, and kind of uh, in the script, were there specifics like in terms of you know how did it come up? How did you guys come up with those? Well, there scenarios? were originally, and then I interrogated the writers to say like okay, to try thinking that my job was to break down the text, and really what they said back to me was a, was a again more invitation of like this could be it. These are things that felt right for us, but were also based on things that we'd already done. This is 
this is your piece, this is your world. And there was so much invitation there, which was what I was hoping to hear, but it was also kind of like, oh God, you know, I, I can't just, you know, break down the script and shoot it. I had to find something that was in the language of where we were, with the people we were with, uh, the character that was gonna be built, um, the motifs that would arrive from that setting. Um, so a lot of it, again, that was also quite intuitive. And, um, but then obviously when we were shooting them, they were hyper composed, similar to the, the fragments and pieces on the floor, hyper composed, but coming out of something that was intuitive from the time and the place in which we were shooting them. Answer your question. <laughs> I tried. I think it was great. Casey, I think one of my favorite parts about your performance here is, you know, obviously it's almost like it, I mean, it's so quiet. We barely hear you speak really until you're kind of like having this relationship with Robert and kind of coming into feeling like you can trust other people. But I think there's also a really interesting physicality about it in terms of kicks, um, the walk. Um, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you. I did create a wall. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I had thought about a walk, um, which my husband found, found so funny. <laughs> shoes actually not dissimilar to that. He was like, they found you the flattest shoes in the world. He was like, I've just never seen such a flat foot walk. Um, and then I, I the, the, the ticks and all were not flat. Nope, don't know what. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, like physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah none of that. Yeah. I feel like there's like all these like there's. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they would recur. Really? Yeah. It was like the same vocabulary of gesture would happen yeah. over. I mean, and so it felt like we, it made our job easy because then I felt like we were building a shorthand behind the camera of like what was going on in front of, inside oh, of you based off of like, oh, she's doing this. I, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do remember doing that at the computer, but I thought, but I just remember it. I didn't think about it. Hmm, strange. I just so thought, interesting. Yeah, I thought physically she's just a person that does not want to take up much room, like inward and shell-like, and the walk, like you know, like I try to sort of take up space in this world as we all should, and I feel like she is not that person. Like she wants to tread lightly on the earth and not like leave a footprint, basically. So that was that was really what I had thought about and then so much of it was just there was initially voiceover so like i had like a whole script of those which was amazing which i ended up using just as stage directions um so i had this like running monologue in my head which was fantastic but so much was influenced by that because it was so clear who fran was mm -hmm. and then i think that probably influenced all of the physicality well everyone thank you for coming tonight thank you. Thank you so much.